right, boys and girls, we are on the beach of Mason Burrell Island. Let's all take a knee and examine the beach. Feel the sand, pick up a little bit of sand, run it through your fingers. Uh, how would you describe it? What would you say the sand is? Is it, is it wet? No, no it's, it's, it's very dry. What other type of environment uh, is very dry and has a lot of sand in it? It starts with a D. Desert. Desert, very good. Uh, the beaches of Barrier Islands are a very desert-like environment. One thing that's exciting about visiting beaches on Barrier Islands is that a lot of the animals and plants that live here, they have incredible adaptions to live in one of the harshest places on Earth. In the summertime, the heat right next to the sand can get to 140 degrees. How many of you all raise your hand have gone to the beach on a really hot day and the sand burns your feet. Did that ever happen? Yeah, that doesn't feel good either. What do you think about animals that live out here that have to endure that day after day? Well, they don't always endure it during the day. One thing that you'll find with a lot of animals that live in the desert and this desert-like environment on the beaches of Mason Bro Island is a lot of the animals that use the beach are more active at night. So an animal that's more active at night we describe as it starts with a, a word that begins with N, nocturnal. Let's all say that together. One, two, three, nocturnal. nocturnal. All right, now, if you're an animal that lives in the desert and something wants to eat you, where are you going to hide? Look around. Are there many plants to hide around? No. No. So where, what are you going to do? Uh, dig a hole dig a hole and that's where ghost crabs live um, but they do have to come out to feed mainly at night but they also have to come out every few hours to go down to the water because they have gills like other crabs do and when they come out during the day that's a time where birds can pick them off raccoons and other things can eat them so they don't have many places to hide like animals that live in the desert and just like animals that live in the desert since they don't have many places to hide they are fast they are fast. All right, we can look at the ghost crab while he's in the bucket. I'm gonna walk around. You see his eyes way up there on stalks so he can see all the way around. You see his 10 legs. You see those claws that can pinch you. Now I'm gonna use my hat to try to take him out of here, which can be challenging. <laughs> all right, and you need to be real careful handling them because they can give you a good pinch. Let's call him Casper. Casper the not so friendly ghost crab. <clears throat> now, I can understand him not being so friendly because he might think I want to eat them. All right, now, when we let him go, let's observe how he moves. Does he move front and back? Does he move side to side? Does he move slow? Does he move fast? And where does he go? All right, you all count down from five and that when we get to zero, I'll let them go. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, notice his tracks. Notice his tracks. And let's look for some of those tracks as we walk up and down the beach. Look at those eyes up on stalks. He's checking everything out to see if there's any predators. He's looking at us, and he's probably trying to find a place to hide. <laughs> he doesn't like being out during the day like this. He knows he's vulnerable. Notice his coloration, how he blends in with the sand. When something blends in with their environment, what do we call that? Starts with C. Camouflage. Very good. Very good. Now, they are really fast. We're seeing some dragonflies fly around today. But sometimes, ghost crabs can actually catch flies out of the air. They're so fast. They're mainly scavengers, meaning they eat dead things, but they all we will eat live things, including mole crabs, which live right at the edge of the ocean. And unfortunately, they will eat baby sea turtles. You might have studied how baby sea turtles hatch out of their sandy nest at night, and that's when the ghost crabs are around, and they sure will eat them. A real fun activity, boys and girls, is to go to the beach in the summertime and all you need to carry with you for your ghost crab adventure is a towel and a flashlight. 
use the towel to throw it over the ghost crab so you can examine him more closely and they won't so they can't pinch you too all right let's look at his body real closely look at those eyes way up there that's one characteristic of crabs they have eyes on stalks uh, girls can you show me your crab eyes show me your crab eyes now one nice thing about having crab eyes is you can see almost all the way around you so if a bird was going to try to dive down on this ghost crab and eat them he might see that bird coming even though the bird's behind him now one bad thing about having eyes show me your eyes you guys eyes on stalks one bad thing about having eyes on stalks is you could get your eyes pinched off by other crabs or by animals that might want to eat you so if that if you have another animal come by down goes your eyes down goes your eyes